Hello, my name is Neil Davidson and I'm the founder of Raw Umber Studios. Welcome to another online portrait drawing session. This video mimics the structure of a regular life drawing class. We'll show you three photographs on the screen, one for 10 minutes, one for 20 minutes, and one for 30 minutes. And it's your job to draw the photograph that you see. Lizette Dinghamers will be joining us. She'll be doing a demonstration in the bottom corner of the screen and giving hints and tips. Once you've finished, don't forget to post your work to Instagram and hashtag it with hashtag raw umber live. Right, let's get started. Hi everyone, this is Lisa Dingemans and welcome to another Raw Umber portrait session. This week I want to continue on the painting but do it a little bit differently. So first of all, people often say that painting is very different from drawing. But it can be very similar. So for instance, the way I drew using charcoal in previous videos, where I marked out the masses and big charcoal shapes, that is basically the same than what you do in paint. Also a little thing to say is, of course, as always, it's up to you which medium you want to use. But for those who want to follow along, I'm only using raw umber and white in this video. So we're going to start this in a very similar way as to what we did before when um, I taught you about boxes. For people who are new, I believe the video I addressed this in is called How to Draw a Head. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to start with just the boxes. And this needs to be a sort of square box. So roughly the side of the skull. And what we're going to try and do is construct a skull almost from imagination and then put her features on top. So in order to find the midpoint of the box uh, where the ear is located, I'm going to draw a cross. And that is the midpoint of our box. And the ear will be located just behind that. The front side of that box will have the face and the back will be where the back of the head is located. In her case, the eyes are, the corners of her eyes are exactly in the middle. So that will be my reference point um, in order to find the middle of the, the front of her face. Also the rule of thirds, we've spoken about this before. Usually uh, the nose to the chin is one third up. From the bottom of the skill, skull and the brow is one third down from the top of the skull. In her case her brow is a little bit lower than that so I've just changed that slightly but that is where they usually locate and the ear will be in the middle of that so that's where you can place it. So now we know where the ear is located we also know where the front of her brow is located from the midpoint up to that third down. We also know where the jaw is located it's in front of the ear. And once we've got that, we also know where the back of the head is, which is just midway point, just behind that ear. And we could just sort of curve off the top of the skull, because that's of course not square. So now we already have most of our skull sorted. So what I'm going to do next is very similar to what I do if I'd be painting, um, sorry, if I'd be drawing in charcoal, and that is fill in all my shadow shapes. So the light is coming from the right. So I'm going to just start figuring out where most of the dark is. So most of our hair is in darkness. So I'm going to place it right there. At this point, I'm not really drawing her hair in as such. I'm just trying to figure out what the planes are for the skull that I'm drawing. Just going to change the camera here because it was a little bit off center. And then I'm going to also put in all the down planes. So the eyes are actually receding into the skull a little bit. So that will be where usually shadow is if the light's coming from the top. And also the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the top lip and the bottom of the lower lip will all be in shadow. Okay, so where this is going to be different than last time, instead of wiping out the lights, I'm just putting in a light with some white, with a little bit of raw umber, so a bit of a muddy white. 
And for this ten minute pose, all I'm trying to do is think of shapes and structure. Because that's the basis of any portrait. And your painting will definitely go through a phase where it looks a little bit odd. Um, don't worry about that. It's just painting in such big masses is not going to look like a person straight away. So all you have to just keep figuring out is drawing, big shapes. Is this a square? Is this a triangle? How does this align with other stuff? And slowly a face will start to emerge. Okay, so now I'm just taking those shapes, and like I did in the drawing as well, I am just adjusting those. So for instance, the lip is a little bit higher, so I'm just changing that shape right there. And so what my goal is for this 10 minute pose is to just do shapes just the same way that I did before in drawing and in painting, just to sort of show you the basic thing that I do with both the wipeout, which I did last week, the drawing, but also this style of painting. Now I want to show you um, when you've got these big blocks in, what you can start doing is what we'll start doing in the second pose. Um, you can start dragging these two colors into each other to create different edges. So I just drag that into the hair and you see now you get a sense of roundness of the skull. So always use a clean brush for this. Um, I like to have a lot of tissue on hand. I clean my brush after every stroke, drag it through into the darker stroke in this case, and then clean again. And this is a nice way to make these blocks into more rounded forms, which will end up looking more realistic. The same thing we can do with the eye. So I can just drag my white brush in, clean it, and then drag it in again. And this way you can get more uh, clearer shapes. And like some of you um, who may have seen me. On, I believe it was Wednesday, the tutorial Q&A, I like to use the biggest brushes available to me. A 
Okay, so now we've got a nice blocking in. So in the second pose, what we're going to do is we're going to take this a little bit further. Okay, so here we are at the second 20 minute pose, and we're gonna start exactly the same way as we did the 10 uh, minute one. So I'm gonna start with the angle of her eyes, which is for me the starting point of the box. So the angle's a little bit higher on the left than the arms on the right, so I'm gonna start with that. And then straight away, I know my center line's gonna be perpendicular to that, so I put that in. And this will be the front of her face, so the front plane of her face. I measured it and her eyes are again in the middle of that front plane. And that same length is the same as the widest point of her cheekbone. So I know that that will be the same measurement. Actually, here I'm just going to lower her eyes a little bit because it's a little bit too high on the canvas so i'm just bringing that down a little bit but still the measurements remain the same so the bottom of her head is equal to the top of her head and that is again equal to the width of the front plane which is the front plane is the width of her cheekbones so measuring that that seems to work so great i've got that sorted another thing that is um the same is the midpoint of her center line to the side of her front plane of her head is the same width as the back of her head so i'm just going to draw that in too and now we've got a nice cube and again using that cross i know where the midpoint of that cube is and when i know where the midpoint of that cube is i also know where the jaw will start and her ear will be so very similar to what we did in a 10 minute pose And again, measuring the rule of thirds, just to get her nose and her brow line in. And then we also know where her ear will be located. So I've just got to go and make the jaw, of course, is not square. So that goes a little bit more narrow from the widest point of her cheekbones. So I can just use that using the angles method that we spoke about a few videos ago. And for those of you who don't know that, that was the measuring video. And now we've got a very rough box of uh, that sort of indicates where her skull is. And again, this is not really to do with likeness or anything like that. We're just trying to construct a skull that makes sense and then put her features on top. So again, rounding off the top of the skull and just putting that indentation in for the, the brow line. Okay, so like I did last time, I'm just going to go in straight with the white, with a little bit of romber in it. Um, and I'm just figuring out those big, that big front plane and how the light works in that. I'm leaving out a bit of a note of where her nose will be so I don't lose that. But otherwise I clean up all the lines. Same thing with her forehead. just lightening up all that where the light hits it and not worrying too much about small details i'm looking for big planes anything going towards the light will be light anything going away from the light will be dark And 
And now we do the same thing with the darks. So just grouping them all in into one big mass. Uh, the last pose I started with the dark masses first. In this case, I start with the light masses first. It doesn't really matter. Um, the main goal of this is just to simplify your drawing a little bit so it's easier to see what's going on. I'm just finding the center line and using that now to break the shapes down a little bit more. So we know that that's the point of our nose, where the nose starts. So I'm just indicating that and then using the white to sort of figure out where the nose will be. And like we did in the 10 minute pose, I'm now just breaking down the shapes a little bit further. Okay, so now what I do is I go in with my dark, um, my dark shapes, and I just drag it into the light. The only thing you have to do with this is you have to watch out that your brush is nice and clean. So every time you put it on the canvas or the board, whatever you're using, make sure to clean it afterwards. But it's okay if both mixes get a little bit muddy. Um, but the main thing is you just want to make sure that you know exactly what is dark and what is light. The minute they get muddled. That whole simplification process is not um, really working anymore. So um, it's quite important to keep the two separate. And just breaking down the shapes like I did in the 10 minute pose, just putting in the top lip, lower lip, got the side of the nose, got a rough sort of idea of a skull now. Of course, it doesn't really look like her at the moment. And we're going to put those shapes on top to make it look more like her. So her hair, and she's a bit more wide in the jaw, that sort of thing. So you can do all of this with charcoal and pencil as well. It's all the same uh, techniques. Um, it's just dark and light shapes and just figuring out where both of them are. So you can do this in pencil, you can do this in charcoal or in paint. And I thought it would be fun to show a few different mediums um, to see how they're all similar, but also how they're all different. Okay, so now I'm going to start putting the hair in. So the hair sits on top of our skull, so it's going to be a bit higher than the skull shape. Um, sorry, my hair got a little bit in the camera here, I believe. Um, sorry about that. Um, surprisingly tricky to paint with a camera in front of it, or in front of the painting. Um, but never mind that. Um, so I'm just putting in the hair. And just using a big dark shape to just sort of figure out where that big shape of the hair is. Again, not too accurate at this point, just putting in those big shapes. And now I can start making it look a little bit more like her. So for instance, I see her forehead is not quite that wide. Her cheekbones are definitely the widest point of her. So I can just start bringing that in. And that's really important for likeness, looking at where's the widest point of somebody's face. Is it the jaw? Is it the cheekbone? Is it the forehead? And that does a lot for somebody's likeness.
Okay, so somebody asked me how to blend in uh, Wednesday's video. Um, so I just want to show you how I do that here. So what we're going to do in a 20 minute post, we're going to just start blending a little bit. And as you can see, I take my brush with a little bit of white paint and I just drag it into the darks. You can do that sideways like I just did or going in softly and just stroking over it slowly. You do want to clean your brush afterwards, otherwise you get an accidental mark like that. But don't worry if that happens, just clean your brush and go over it and it will disappear into the mess. And the purpose of this blending method is to make my big shapes a little bit more, um, feel more rounded. So you can see you can just stroke over that um, transition between the light and the dark and just sort of very lightly touch on it and it will blend together. And this is something that really works well um, in oil paint. If you're using gouache or watercolor, you can also spray a bit of water and then go over with a white, with a dry brush. The acrylic, not so much. It dries a little bit too quick for that. So if you want to blend using acrylic, um, you either have to do it right away or get a medium that lets you work wet in wet for a little bit longer. You can see again, I'm just blending, laying the brush down very, very softly and just stroking on that transition area. And what I try to do is anywhere where the form goes round, so the side of her head, for instance, I try to make it soft. And anywhere where there's a sudden change, for instance, the top lip versus the lower lip, um, or where a shadow is being cast on a form, that's where I try to make it sharp. So for instance, now on the side of the nose, that's a sharp shadow. So I try to keep that nice and sharp. But then for instance, the side of her nose there, that's a little bit softer. So that's where I would blend a little bit more. And having those two next to each other makes for a more exciting painting or drawing. So if you are drawing, you can Use the same technique using uh, your fingers or a rubber or a little bit of tissue paper and just blend between the shadow and the light. So I'm just constantly looking for smaller shapes, soft shapes versus hard shapes. And when I want a hard shape, I make sure I have fresh paint, clean brush. And if I want to have a soft shape, actually make sure I have a relatively uh, non-saturated brush, so not a lot of paint on there. And then I just gently touch the canvas, so not a lot of pressure. And this way of seeing shadows 
is um, you can see that, for instance, on the eye there, it just looked like a blob. And now slowly we start seeing an eye in there, even though it still is just blobs. And this is called Gestalt, which is a German word um, meaning just shadow or shape. And what it means is that we as people, we tend to see things in uh, in clouds or in, you know, Jesus in a cup of coffee. And we just tend to interpret the wor world around us. And we can use that for painting. So if we just make our blobs the right shape, they will start looking like a face. So instead of drawing what we know should be there, we can just draw shapes and they will start looking like a face almost magically. Okay, I'm just going to keep going on these shapes and then I'll see you at the 30 minute pose.
Okay, so here we are at the last post. Um, so now we know about the box methods, which I'll use again um, on this post and blending. Now I'm going to add one last thing, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. So let's start with this whole box thing again. So again, looking at the angle of her eyes and then putting in the center line. And just measuring again how wide that box on the side should be. Putting in that cross and figuring out where the ears are and the rule of thirds. And again, putting in those width of the cheekbones versus width of the chin angles and the indentation for the eyes and that roundness of the top of the head. So this pose is very similar to the last one. She's just a little bit more angled towards us. So let's see how that goes. One little thing about the jawline, she does have an angle on the jawline. So if you have an angle on the jawline on one side, it should also be there on the other side. So I've put that in. And then of course the two mastoid muscles from the ears to the pit of the neck and an indication of the shoulders. And I'm going in straight with my slightly muddied down white and just putting in all those front planes again. This last pose is probably going to be the hardest one because she is not only three quarters away from us, but she's also looking up slightly. So it's a little bit more tricky um, than the 20 and the 10 minute pose, which were a bit more straight on. But um, that's why we've got a bit of extra time. So do make sure to really make sure you got your structure in properly. Your, you'll see that your brain, well, my brain at least. Um, I, I do see this a lot with students as well. Um, that the head automatically sort of starts looking at you, the viewer. It seems to be sort of an instinctual thing that we have when drawing. So always when somebody's looking away from you, three quarters, or away from you up or down, always make sure that you're actually angling that head and not accidentally making it straight on. All right, so just going in with my shadows and just putting in those big planes of the side of the nose, that sort of thing. Okay, so we've already got a indication of the general masses of the head in. 
And now, like we did in the other two poses, we're going to start breaking this down. And because she's angled, I'm just checking my measurement for the mouth, because I also have that tendency. And as you can see, the mouth was way too low. So I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. But that's also really what I love about painting. You just put something down and then you can push it around and change it around again. And that's, um, for me, is one of the fun things, like the puzzle of trying to get it right. And comparing this method of putting in white and um, dark instead of wiping out a, a light, it's a good exercise because it sort of for, uh, sort of forces you to learn how paint behaves a little bit. When the first times I painted, I made a huge mess, you know, uh, paint everywhere. If you don't keep your brush nice and clean, it does get very muddled. Um, so painting in black and white is always a really good exercise on how to mix paint, how to control it. Um, but if I do an actual longer painting, I use the method that I used last week where I wipe out the light. And I'm now starting to blend using a very dry hog brush because they give really nice soft edges. Um, and just going over that transition between light and dark where it is rounded. For those of you who enjoy this, um, we're also going to do a figure drawing um, video. I think it's it's the 6th of May and we'll be doing nude models, same sort of setup, an hour long. And I think you can book it at rawumberstudios.com, our website. So have a look at that if you're interested. I'd really love to see you there. And the nude model is always just really good to to learn from even better than a portrait, I think, because you learn a lot about the human body, like the landmarks and how it's structured, which is very useful if you're going to be drawing nudes or anything. All right, so now with the edges in, you can start seeing that there's a sense of space now, a sense of a object in space. Again, it doesn't look like her at the moment, but that's okay. We still just only want to have a sense of a head in space, and then we can put her likeness on top. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting her hair in. So again, on top of her skull, so not pasted on her skull. So a little bit higher than that and just adding that around her skull. Also, with hair, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of a lost uh, sort of softer edge there. Otherwise, it may look a little bit like a wig. So it's pasted on top. So I always make sure to find a place where I blend my lighter skin tone in with the hair. And that also helps with making it look like the skull is turning backwards more.
with regards to hair, you can see that um, you don't have to draw every single hair in. If you get a little bit of a rough brush, you can just sort of um, get a texture in the highlight that suggests hair a little bit. And that's a lot easier than drawing all five million hairs. Saves you a little bit of time. And like I did in the 20 minute pose, just making my shapes smaller and smaller and hopefully more accurate. Um, without using anything else, just using that muddy white and a little bit of that muddy raw umber. Just keeping my darks and lights separate. And keeping an eye on what is a hard shape versus a soft shape. Okay, so now what we're going to do is a little bit different than what we did in a 10 and 20 minute pose. I'm going to now introduce a lighter light, so more pure white and a darker dark. And what this is going to do, this is going to help us get more of a sense of volume. So for instance, now I introduce some white on the right of our forehead because the light is coming from the right and on the right of our cheekbone. And then trying to blend that in with the existing sort of muddy white we have. And you can keep building this up. So you can go thicker every time you want a lighter white and thinner every time you want it to be blended in. And this wet into wet style of painting is called a la prima. And this is actually what I do 90% of the time. I really like working wet into wet. So I'm just laying on the paint very gently, not putting a lot of pressure on. Just laying it on and then for blending, just stroking it a few times so that it blend into the existing wet paint. Highlights like this will usually lay on the side of the light. So very rarely, if ever, will they be in the shadow side of the face. So I always try and see where they are on the right side first. And they will also be located where something is pointing towards the light. So the bottom lip is pointing straight towards the source of the light. So that's where I'm going to put my highlight. I tend to think of the head as a big egg. And so everything sort of like a big round shape. So everything on the side of the light will be lighter than everything on the side of the shadow. Which sounds like it would make sense, but it's surprisingly hard sometimes to keep it like that.
for someone who asked me about palettes on Wednesday and what sort of colors I use, as you can see, just with raw umber or and white, or I believe um, actually I used a bit of red umber as well. So with a very um, muted palette, you can already get a lot of skin tones. You actually don't need a lot of color in there. But this is also an aesthetic choice. I quite like monochromatic paintings. Um, other people prefer more colorful ones, so it's completely up to you. And you can see that um, anywhere where I place my light, it comes more towards it visually. So you can sort of remember that as a general guideline. Light is perceived as coming towards us. Darks are perceived as receding. So for that reason, I also always try to keep my darks fairly flat and light, not very thick. And then my lights nice and thick. So that sort of helps with that illusion of the lights coming towards you and the darks receding and you know, going away from you.
So now we've got the light in. I'm also going to do the same thing with the dark. So I'm going to start putting in dark accents where the darks, uh, where the shadows really turn under. So for instance, on the bottom of her top lid, that really turns under. So that's where I'm going to start putting that darker accent. And this is also a way to pull focus. So your eye gets pulled towards contrast. So um, I try to put my darker accents in place where I want the viewer to look. And this accent that I'm putting on uh, right now is called an occlusion shadow. So in shadows where something is really turning under, that's usually where you'll see the dark really concentrate. So on the bottom of her jaw, that's where I put an occlusion shadow using black. Just getting a bit of some excess hair on top there. And I'm going to put in my final highlight. Okay, so that was it for this week. Um, please let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any requests for next week. And uh, maybe I will see you the 6th of May uh, if you're joining us for the figure drawing. And otherwise, I will see you next Sunday. I'm just going to finish up on those highlights. and. Um, then we're done.
Thank you for taking part. Don't forget to photograph your work and post it on Instagram and hashtag it with hashtag raw umber live. I'd like to thank Lizette Dingermans for drawing along with us today and you can download the photographs you've seen in this week's session from the link I'm about to show you on the screen. You can follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thank you. Goodbye. On Wednesday the 6th of May we have a figure drawing session in collaboration with the Art Model Collective. It'll be based on the theme of veiled marble. You can find out more on our website.